Hey, it's Jessica Damasa with WTF Health. I am here at Hims 19 at the Together.Health event, and joining me right now, I have Luba Greenwood. She leads strategic business development and venture investment for Verily, which is one of the Google companies. So Luba, it's great to have you here. Thank you, thanks for having me. All right, so you get to weigh in for me and give me a perspective outside of healthcare from like the big tech world. So curious to hear you know, some of your insights. So when it comes to, I guess, like where the market is headed, I mean, you're somebody who's got a healthcare background. So I do wanna say that, that you, you were in Roche, um, you were involved in the Flatiron acquisition there, you were involved in My Sugar and a bunch of other great deals. And so going out of healthcare and now landing in a consumer tech company, Company, the landscape's got to be a little bit different. So what's everybody on the consumer tech side talking about when it comes to healthcare? Sure, uh, very good question. So one of the things that the, all the tech players are looking at is at the convergence, right? So uh, tech initially has looked at healthcare starting with more tech play and looking, going to more consumer patient type of connectivity. And now tech players are really looking at that convergence between the healthcare, all the healthcare players. So that's pharmaceutical industry, diagnostics, med device, tech, and all in order to engage patients and engage providers and payers as well. What is, um, from the tech side of things, like what, what do you guys feel like you can contribute, like bring to the table? I mean, obviously it's like you're looking at, to talk to these different patients, p providers, payers, all that stuff, unite the ecosystem. Is it really the tech prowess that you guys feel like you can bring in? And if so, it's like, how do you plan on negotiating? Because as somebody with a healthcare background, you know how nuanced and awful this can be. So t tell me, I guess, what, what, when you're sitting there um, within those big tech companies, like what do you guys feel like you can bring to the table? So yes, yeah, so what is so first of all, what is data, right? And what data plays today? So and this is something I mentioned at the conference today, is we started out with chemistry really, and then we went into biology and biologics antibodies, and now we're finally getting into the precision medicine from the point of view of data and truly leveraging that data. But what does that mean? In order to leverage that data and actually pull analytics from that data in order to um, gain meaningful insights for the patient, for the provider, for the payer, and also improve outcomes and lower cost, in order to do that, you need a whole team of scientists, of data scientists, you need a team of um, software engineers, hardware engineers, and I would say big, big um, tech companies can really bring that together. So instead of having, let's say, one a data scientist or one software engineer. We have a whole number of them and they're a whole team of them. And they're also, all the tech companies, they also have a way to make sure that all the team members truly engage and provide a, a product for the either the patient or the provider or the payer or the continuum of both. When you guys are, are talking in your meetings, and I guess, like, I'm just curious, like, you, I always wonder, like, you know, we always in healthcare joke about how messed up everything is. I mean, hence the WTF health, right? So, I mean, but I want to know, like, from, from the outsider perspective, when you have these room fulls, rooms full of data scientists and they're looking at all of this data, you know, de-identified or not, whatever, I mean, they're looking at that stuff. Are they also kind of having a WTF moment? And if so, what is that about? <laughs> Uh, what are they yes. like, oh my God, why about it? Well, the, the nice thing, right, I mean, when the, the nice thing about being newcomers for tech, right, is that you have a fresh perspective yes. on healthcare. So tell right? us what we're missing. So, <laughs> so the fresh perspective, you say, okay, well, this is interesting. This is how the incentives have been laid out before, right? These are the incentives of the providers, of the payers, but the nice thing, or PBMs, right, right. And, and the entire healthcare ecosystem in the U.S., right? So in the U.S., uh, the incentives are built differently, and this is for all of you that are international and thinking about building tools for, uh, for let's say, Europe or uh, internationally or China, which are kind of the biggest markets right now for digital health. If you're looking for that, that's a very different type of play than the United States because right. here we have an entirely different ecosystem. So having that fresh perspective and also having the clinicians and the scientists and the data scientists together in one room, it actually helps you see a little more clearly. So what we do is we start more, okay, what is data? Then you understand it, you cleanse it, right? You annotate it, which is what flat iron is. Yep. But then before you can even get to the point where you uh, put any type of analytics, I know people love the words AI and ML, and you know all it is really is applying math, right? What is machine learning? Math. Um, <laughs> applying so basically math in order to gain insights, but insights have to be from really good data. You have to annotate it the really well. You have to make sure that once you have the data, it's also clinically validated, whatever the tool it is that you're providing. And the third, which is actually the place where I think tech can make play a uh, big role is to truly scale it. Right. Because it's one thing to actually do something and create an amazing product or even a service or a platform, but it's a whole other, and, and even if you clinically validate it, but it's a whole other story to truly scale it to the point of that you can even 
change some of those incentives or, or incentivize the players to play in a different way. I think that's what we're all hoping for secretly. <laughs> that was like, beautifully worded. <laughs> all right, so I want to know, I guess, last question for you. I mean, it's like, let's say, I mean, and you're somebody who's, who's made some really, been involved in some really big bets on investing in terms of like the acquisition of Flatiron, like we said already, mm -hmm. um, and also my sugar and those others. And so I'm curious, I mean, I know now like um, within Verily, you guys have raised a billion dollars just in January. Uh -huh. And so it's like, I'm curious to know if one were to happen to have a billion dollars, to throw at some stuff in health technology or health IT, what would you be looking at? And you don't have to, I mean, I don't need specifics, but be, it would be nice to know what kinds yes. of problems you think mm -hmm. are deserving of those dollars. Yes, so absolutely. So I would say for all the investors out there, what you really need to concentrate is what is the, not the long, long-term goal. Well, depending what kind of investor right. you are. If you right. would like return on investment in the next 18 to, I would say, 48 months and maybe even up to three years, yeah. really invest in the actual convergence of, um, of diagnostics industry, med device industry, and pharma and helping them play in a value-based care system, okay. right? Because today, if you think what is value-based, right? You can't just change the system and, and muscle your way in and say, this is how we're going to play, right? You have to help the, the traditional players to actually exist and, and provide the tools for patient and be more patient-centric, but in a way that would benefit the patients and would also benefit and help the provider to provide the health. And, so do you and mean like giver. meeting them where they are, more or less? Meeting them where they are, and yeah. this is again, this is short, this is for investors, right? Sure. This is sort of short to midterm goal, right? Okay. Where where you truly are going to have an exit. You're going to have an IPO, or you're going to have an actual company that will, will need those services, right? Okay. And so if you can create a platform, for example, as an example, I create a platform for a therapeutic company in order to truly personalize care, right? To collect that real world evidence, to create, to understand social determinants of health and how that affects um, the response to, uh, so that's for the therapeutic, right, companies, or for even for, to expedite your clinical trials and virtualize some of your right. clinical trials to reduce the cost. So, so those are the things that uh, pharmaceutical companies are interested in. For diagnostic, to disrupt a little bit of some of that install base that you have in the hospital, because where do you have the savings is really at home if you keep patients away from the hospital. So if you could do some of more of those things, and again, to help diagnostic companies converge also and more on the tech side, sure. and gain me and provide meaningful insights, and gain meaningful insights to really at the point of care for the patient rather than at the hospital. And for med device, again, it's the same thing. I mean, med device companies are also going into getting more insights so that they can make their devices better, so that they can reduce infection rates, so that they can understand how the devices affect the patients um, and help also the providers make sure that there's recovery for that patient as well. So that's where we go as an investor. <laughs> With them, um, this was like a shorter term investment, right? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. So with something that's longer term, like if you were to invest in a big moonshot, mm -hmm. is there anything in particular that you're interested in there? If I were to invest in a moonshot, I would actually <laughs> invest in, in, in a company that provides a platform that connects the patient and the provider and the payer. And an actual platform that can go after some of the most costliest diseases and some of the biggest burdens on health for individuals. So that's where I would go. Okay. Cool. Yes. Well, Luba, thank you so much thank for you. joining. It's so insightful to hear like the tech company perspective because I feel like even though you're from healthcare initially, it's like already you can tell like you've got a different way of like viewing these things yes. and framing up the problem. So That's it's right. really insightful to learn That's from right. you in and that way. I'd love more people from uh, from healthcare to come to tech. <laughs> we sure we would all love more. to go. Yes. <laughs> Jumping ship. Here we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks oh my gosh. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for joining us. This is such a pleasure to talk with you. I'm Jessica Damaso with WTF Health here at the Together.Health event at HIMSS19. Thanks for joining us.